Uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another physics lesson in grade 12 physics. Um, as we get to the end of dynamics, we're going to start to look at um, some frames of reference, just as we did when we got to the end of kinematics, uh, and we looked at uh, relative motion and special relativity. Uh, now we've got some forces to add to this, um, or to at least understand how uh, forces appear to work in different frames of reference. So, um, if we could just think back, um, we're going we're gonna to talk about frames of reference, and I just want you to think of a frame of reference as being a perspective used to investigate different physics situations, and that's really all a frame of reference is. It's very straightforward. It's just simply a way of looking at a physics situation. Now, <clears throat> a frame of reference to be a perspective has to contain an observer, as, as you will. It could be you. Um, and it has to contain some measurement of space and time. And we can remember when we were looking at frames of reference at very high speed, such as with special relativity, um, the measurements of time and the measurements of space became a little bit um, peculiar, didn't they? So we're going to look at um, these various measures of space and time. So you can remember when we were, when we were looking at... Um, frames of reference at the end of kinematics, we talked about the perspective of you sitting very still in our classroom and there was no motion, or we looked at our classroom when viewed from uh, the perspective of the sun and everybody agreed that yes indeed there was motion and we were actually moving at about 30 kilometers a second. So we're going to talk about two frames of reference. So the first frame of reference um, is an inertial frame of reference, and that frame of reference name kind of gives you a clue as to what it means. It means that Newton's first law, the law of inertia, appears to hold true. In fact, inertia always holds true. It's just our interpretation. The second frame of reference that we're going to look at is considered to be a non-inertial frame of reference. And um, this is a little bit tricky, but it is a, a situation or a perspective on physics in which inertia appears not to hold true. That's not saying that inertia doesn't hold true. It just simply says that it appears not to hold true. Now, when we're looking at these frames of reference, it's sometimes helpful to realize what is really going on with these. Um, and I will give you examples of this shortly, but for example, uh, in an inertial frame of reference, your frame of reference is a non-accelerated frame of reference. Okay, so that's in a situation where things are not accelerating. The actual whole frame of reference is not accelerating. While when we are looking at a non-inertial frame of reference, the frame of reference is actually accelerated or being accelerated. Um, and so those are the differences between these two frames of reference. And I'm going to give you examples of exactly what that means right now. So let's just start by looking at a, um, an inertial frame of reference. Um, so if you were to be driving down the 401 in a car, uh, let's see if we can draw a car. Perhaps we'll draw a truck. They're sometimes easier to deal with. And... Um, they're just because they're bigger. So here's our truck and we're driving along and we have a velocity equal to 120 kilometers per hour. And you are sitting on this or in this truck on a chair as you do. Um, and you're talking to somebody, um, actually you're, you're talking to the driver and the driver is sitting there and, um, you have another friend in the truck with you and they are actually facing backwards and as you do when you're driving along the 401 you have become rather bored and you decide that you'll start throwing a ball back and forth so you toss the ball to your friend and they return the ball to you and you can see very quickly that in this situation um, inertia holds very true the ball will um, sit in your lap when 
you put it down and when you apply a force to the ball it will fly towards your friend so inertia is holding true so this is an inertial frame of reference and um, the acceleration of the truck at this point is equal to zero meters per second squared the velocity is uniform and there is no acceleration okay now let's look at a non-inertial frame of reference so I've I've put you in a truck or I guess a bus in this case and um, we are looking at a situation where um, you're you were driving at a velocity, and we'll make this uh, V1. The initial velocity of the truck or the bus was uh, 120 kilometers per hour. But now we have a problem in that we are beginning to decelerate. Actually, this deceleration is rather fast, but that's okay. Um, and we are braking, the, the truck is slowing down at 1.8 meters per second squared. You had the um, you had placed the ball that you had been playing with on the floor uh, of this truck, and as the truck begins to slow down, you suddenly notice that that ball, under its own seeming desire, begins to slide forward, and you realize that hmm, this is very strange. You you imagine that you're sitting in this truck, and there's there's clearly a fictitious force or a a strange force moving that ball forward causing um, it to be pulled towards the driver and there's 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 no reason for this it appears in this accelerated frame of reference that there must be a fictitious force pulling this ball uh, towards the driver towards the front of the truck you also would see this if you were sitting in a car and you had just gotten into the car and you would put your your uh, cup of hot chocolate on the dashboard in front of you and your brother decides to accelerate the car very quickly and puts his foot down on the accelerator and all of a sudden a fictitious force begins to pull back on your um, hot chocolate and it spills all over you. Well what is going on there is it appears that inertia isn't holding true. It appears that the frame of reference there's no within that frame of reference there's there's no reason to acknowledge why that ball would roll forward or the hot chocolate would roll backwards it appears that there's a fictitious force in reality what we know is the whole frame of reference is in motion it is actually accelerating and it is causing the motions that so let's just be clear when the entire frame of reference, the, in this case the bus or the truck, is accelerating um, at negative 1.8 meters per second squared, the reason the ball is seemingly being pulled forward is because of inertia. When we're in a car that your brother decides to press on the accelerator and it begins to move um, rapidly forward and speed up, the reason the hot chocolate falls in your lap is because of inertia. It wants to stay in one place, but the car itself is moving forward. Okay, here is an example of an accelerated frame of reference problem. So let's pretend for a moment that we are sitting on the subway. Now, you have to imagine that in sitting on your subway, um, you don't actually have any uh, view out the window and you can remember as we looked at Albert Einstein sitting on the train as he was traveling to visit his um, his mother in Italy he also didn't have any perspective outside and that's really what you have so you're sitting in a subway and uh, as it's as the question says you've hung your necklace from one of the overhead handles as you do and there's the bob on the end of your necklace and, and you've hung this necklace here and you find you notice an interesting um, an interesting thing at one point in the in the journey you notice if this is our um, our perpendicular line you notice that the the necklace is hanging at an angle 
and that angle is equal to 14 degrees. And you think, oh, that's rather interesting. And you decide, as you do, that you'll do some calculations to explain what is actually going on with the frame of reference that you are in. And because this is a physics problem, you would, of course, sit down and you would draw a free body diagram for this. So, so let's do that. Let's, we know that there is a force of gravity pointing directly down towards the center of the Earth. And we can look at this diagram and we can say, oh, well, there's, there's going to be another force here. Um, there's going to be a force of tension acting up this string. So that force of tension uh, we can label. And because we have put angles into this, uh, we know that we're going to have to break this down into components. So we're going to have a force of tension Y. And we're going to have this, which is a force tension X. And when we look at this, we can see, interestingly, there's there's a very limited number of forces acting on here and we can actually do two very quick um, equations. So we can see the sum of the forces in the Y is equal to um, the force of gravity plus the force of tension Y. And we know that this is not crashing through the ground and it's, it's, it's not crashing through the ceiling of the uh, subway, there's no acceleration in the y, so we have zero newtons in this case is equal to the force of gravity plus the force of tension y. And so now we can immediately see that the force, the magnitude of the force of gravity is equal to the magnitude of the force of tension y. Um, and, and we can see that those are equal but opposite in direction as we know. And we seem to have gone about as far as we can with that. Why don't we take a look at um, the sum of the forces in the X component? Well, if we look at that, all we find here is that the sum of the forces in the X component is equal to um, the force of tension X. Well, that's kind of strange because we're standing in this, in this subway. And to us, there doesn't appear to be any acceleration, except for the fact that this necklace or pendulum is hanging on an angle. And what this is actually telling us is that the frame of reference is actually accelerating. So what we are actually going to do is we're going to solve this uh, problem from an Earth-based frame of reference. So if we were to be looking at this subway as it was passing by, we would say, oh, well, what's going on here is quite obvious. What we have here is mass times acceleration due to gravity is equal to, let's see here, um, it's going to be our y component, uh, and so we're going to have cos theta times ft. And over here we can do the same thing, and we can say that uh, mass times the acceleration of this frame of reference, of actually the subway itself, is equal to um, the force of tension x. So that's going to be sine theta times ft. So what I really want to do right now is I want to solve and, and determine exactly what is the acceleration of this frame of reference. So what actually is going on in this case such that I can solve for this frame of reference? So what I'm going to do over here really quickly is let's isolate for ft. And so in this case we will end up with, and I'm just going to move this over here because I'm running out of room, ft is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity all divided by cos theta. And I'm going to take this ft and I'm going to sub it into this equation here for ft. Let me just get some of these lines out of the way. 
So I will end up with mass times acceleration is equal to sine theta times, and we're going to put this whole equation into um, this term. So m times g divided by cos theta. Okay, and you can see that we can get rid of these masses. And you will remember from a previous video where we did this before that sine theta divided by cos theta is tan theta. And we end up with the fact that the acceleration of the frame of reference is equal to tan theta times g. And based on all of our information here with an angle of 14 degrees, which you could put in here and multiply by 9.8 meters per second squared, you can solve for the acceleration of the 